The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hey guys, it's Ben Nash here. I'm one of the co-founders at Ensemble and founder of financial advice company Pivot Wealth, which is my business baby I started from scratch a little bit over seven years ago. In that time, I've leveraged some of the learnings of the Ensemble community to scale the business to become one of the better known financial advice companies for high income accumulators in Australia. And through this podcast, you can join me each Tuesday as I have the absolute privilege of interviewing some amazing people where I'm going to selfishly be able to learn and continue my journey to improve every area of my advice business. Hopefully you can learn a few things on that journey as well. Jump over to Ensemble.com and if you haven't already signed up to learn and share from others or simply download the app. This podcast series is brought to you by leading Australian life insurer, TAL. TAL is committed to partnering with advisors to protect the financial well-being of their clients now and into the future. TAL's accelerated protection products ensure your clients have access to cover options that are suited to their individual needs. Last financial year, TAL paid $2.7 billion in claims to nearly 40,000 customers. Hey guys, welcome back to the Ensemble podcast and today uh today's a bit of a special day it's actually it's gonna be my last ensemble podcast for a little while for the last two years i've been cranking these out every week and through that time i've had conversations with some amazing advisors and people around the advice industry uh and today i'm talking to the one and only mr paul dunn uh paul (laughs) is uh, a superstar in in all uh aspects but um today we're talking about uh, business giving and Paul's a co-founder of B1G1. He's got, uh, uh, I won't even say how many decades of experience in business, but it's a lot. <laughs> Four times TEDx speaker. He uh, has been there and done it all. And uh, I thought no no better guest to have on on my last uh, last show for a little while. Paul, great to have you here, mate. Well, Ben, it is uh, great, uh, great to be here as well. I, I, I looked it up, actually. It's uh, about four, f- uh, wait there, I can't count it, five years ago since we met. Uh, you may remember we met up on the uh, north coast there of Sydney and uh, uh, in June, and so it's been a great five years. It's been awesome to see what you've been doing uh, in those five years as well. Uh, we might let some people know about some interesting numbers uh, as we go through this, but uh, Ben, rather obviously, I'm very privileged to be here, and for those of you listening, uh, thank you for listening as well. Well, yes, uh, as you say, but we met uh yeah, almost five years ago at uh, one of the Den Global yeah. retreats, and um, Paul was there chatting about uh, B1G1 and, and their story, B1G1, buy one, give one, the business giving organization that's taking the world by storm and helping connect businesses around uh, their business giving and making sure that they're uh, having a positive impact on the world while they're doing good business. I was immediately taken with the story and uh, you know, perfect timing for for what we were focused on. That at that time, I'd been in business for a bit over two years, and uh, we, you know, been doing some stuff that I thought was was pretty cool. But this just seemed to me like the the final piece of the puzzle. And I won't steal Paul's thunder, but um, <laughs> yeah, looking at how we can yeah have a have a positive impact and and create an impact not just on our clients but on the the broader community is something that um, I really connected with almost immediately and we've put in place i'm happy to share a bit of, of that story as well but all for anyone that is not already familiar with buy one give one or b1g1 can you just uh, talk us through the story and how you guys have ended up where you are today sure i can and uh again ben thank you for having me here let me give let me give you some context to that that whole story um and uh the the context is, is this when when we're building businesses like you and you kind of hit it a moment ago but when you're a financial advisor and you're building businesses, what, what is it you actually want to build? Well, yes, you want to build an exciting business, one that brings you joy and everything else. But uh, here's a new term, Ben, that I, that I coined last week after years of trying to find a term. And what I, uh, the term I found was that we all want to build what, what I call a belonging-based business. Let me just illustrate what I mean by a belonging-based business and then, then get to uh, the story. 
Um, and if I go back uh, four years, I think it was four years, uh, Mr. Bezos, he of Amazon fame, uh, was being interviewed. I think it was a Southwest by uh, whatever that big uh, conference in the in the US is called. And we know Mr. Bezos is pretty successful, right? And so here's the interviewer interviewing Bezos on stage. And there's three and a half thousand people in the room. And the interviewer turns to Bezos and he, and he says, so Jeff, by the way, that's one of my goals in life, to be able to meet with Bezos and say, so Jeff, but so the interviewer says, so, so Jeff, uh, you know, you've been doing things for a long time now since the start of Amazon. What is now the market or the advice that you give to your marketing team? And Bezos looks straight at him and he says, well, it's exactly the same as the advice I gave them at day one, right? And so the interview is somewhat stunned and he, and he says to Bezos, but oh, okay, man, I missed that. What is, the, what is the advice? And what he said was this, to always remember that everyone wants to belong. And it's that, it's that sense of belonging, which comes obviously from a sense of caring and all that kind of stuff, that I think is very, very central. If the, if uh, you know, COVID taught us one thing, it is that we are all connected, yet we seek belonging at every, at every sense, and so, or at every turn. And so, the B1G1 story, which started with Masami, uh, my, my then co-founder, <laughs> and now somewhat, somewhat a bit more than co-founder, uh, uh, was in a mentoring session with me, and I was mentoring her, and she said, "Can we, can we, can we do something different today in this mentoring session?" And I said, "Sure." And every, all, all of us have moments in life, don't we? And I'm, I'm really, really hopeful that this moment that I'm about to talk about is actually a moment for you as well—a moment that you remember as a turning point uh, in in the business. And 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 so she said to me. Uh, and she said, well, I, can I ask you a question? Because as you know, Ben, normally mentors are the ones that ask questions. And I said, sure. And she said, well, my, my question is really a what if question. I want you to imagine, she said, I want you to imagine a world where every time business is done, something great happens in our world. And at the time I was regarded as an Aussie bloke. And, and, and I said, Oh wow, that'd be amazing! <laughs> and she was smart enough to be able to say, "I don't think you get it yet." And I said, "Well, I hope we get it." And and she said, "Well, in my mind, I've called it buy one give one, which of course is no longer called. It's called B one G one now." But at in her mind, it was that. And, and I, I, I said, well, "Okay, so how's it work?" She said, "Well, imagine. I hope I can uh, make a the, the the people I'm about to mention mention are not sponsoring this show, by the way." But she said, "She said." Imagine you want to buy a TV and you go to Harvey Norman. There you go. There's the, there's the big name drop. And, and you want to buy this big plasma TV. And I said, wait, 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 hang on a second. What is, what could you say this thing's called? Buy one, give one? I said, Masami, that's not a very good business model because if I go to buy a TV, they're not going to give me another one. And she said, no, 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 no. You, you don't understand. She said, you want that TV on account of how you want bigger pixels, brighter pixels, larger, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So then, and here's the moment, and this, I, I want you to think very clearly about this moment. So she said, how would it be when someone buys that, or when you buy that TV, if someone who cannot see gets the gift of sight? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh my God, that would be like, yeah, whoa. And I'm, you know, I'm surrounded by books as I was at the time, and I, as I am now. And 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 she said, or oh, imagine, you know, author sells book and tree gets planted, or and I had a cup of coffee. She said, or oh, imagine when someone drinks a cup of coffee, a child in need gets access to water. And I said, can I be your mentor for the rest of your life? That was how important that was in 2007. So think about that in terms of my choice of working with you as a financial advisor. And imagine if we have, for example, we let's say we have a meeting on Zoom and during the meeting, you or at the end of the meeting, you happen to say, oh, by the way, Sally and Bill, thank you so much for being here in this discovery session as a, for example. Uh, by the way, I just want you to know that as a result of you being here, uh, five children just got access to game-changing education. Thank you very much for making that happen. What? You got to be, you got to be kidding me! No, no, no. That's that's what we do here at you know X Y Z or X Y uh, financial advisors. We believe that there's something bigger 
than us, as it were. And of course, when you're a client, that's what you're playing a part in as well. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. And so all of a sudden, what you've done is you've given them that sense of belonging, that sense of meaning, and importantly, you've got that sense of meaning yourself. So when we first started B1G1, we said, because you know, a lot of times people think, oh, this is like you know, giving to charity and all that kind of stuff. No, this is so, so much different than, than that. It really is. Because we, on that day, we, we said it's about three things. It's about impact. In other words, it should never be about the money that you're giving. It should always be about the impact that you're creating. For example, Ben is probably too uh, uh, too embarrassed. Well, no, you wouldn't be embarrassed, but it's not something you'd trumpet, but I'll trumpet it for you. As we are talking with Ben right now, he is actually in the team and his clients have actually created 2.764 billion giving impacts. Just think about that for a minute. And, I, and by the way, I'm going to give you more, more, uh, more, more connection to that in just a second. So first thing is, it's all about impact. Second thing is, it's all about habits. In other words, this is not something, you know, in those days, way back in 2007, the big thing was, you know, you went to charity balls and, and you know, after 24 hours, you know, you go home and it's all over and the hotel is a little bit richer. <laughs> and I'm not knocking all of those things. They, they really do need the, to do that stuff. But what if, what if every single aspect of your business was involved in some form, like, like I told you before about, let's say, Zoom, where you have a great meeting or something happens. And then the final thing, which is really the most important thing, is connection. So it's impact, habit, and connection. Now, when we first, Ben, when we first mentioned connection, people want to think that, oh, I get it. And it's connecting with my prospects. It's connecting with my clients. Wow, yeah, I really get it. That's a good reason. And all of that is true. But the most important connection there is the connection that it has with you. And, and the reason that I mention that is one of the things, Ben, that we do, and I know you do it as well, uh, you know, we, we regularly talk to our, our members and they're all around the world right now, some 3,200 of them. And we ask them this question. We say to them, what do you say when you talk with your friends about B1G1? And we thought that they would say, oh, you know, you can give from one cent. You can make an impact from one cent. We thought they would say all of your giving goes to, you know, wherever it is that you, where you're choosing to give across these 447 right now projects. We thought they would say all of those sorts of things. And we thought they would say, you know, you can map it, you can display it on your website, all of that. We thought that's what they would say. But we had this word cloud. You know those word cloud things where you were talking to people and bang, the words that they're using comes up on the screen? And, and this, I think, is probably the most significant thing in the story. Uh, yes, we can talk about belonging. We can talk about all of those sorts of things. But let's talk about the next order of that. So what was happening when, when we do this, and we do it frequently, the word that comes out is this word, transform, transform. And we go, what? What, what are you saying? There's a bot. Now, this actually, uh, yes, it did all the things you, you were talking about, but it actually transformed our business. And, and we go, whoa, that's pretty big. Why would you say that? Listen to what they say. They say, oh, it's because all of us on the team now have a giving spirit, a giving spirit, and that or impact creation spirit, if you will. And that's something that changes up everything. So, yes. All sorts of great things are happening. We're doing amazing things in the world. Uh, you know, 319 million giving impacts or, uh, as, we, as we speak today. But the real essence of that story, like any story, is that the hero in that story, not necessarily the beneficiaries, although obviously that's, that's part of it, but the real hero in that story is you and your team and your clients working together to make great things happen in their lives and in our world. Well, I think that one of the things you touched on there is around team. And one of the things that we'll, we found in uh, working with, with B1G1 and, and focusing on business giving while we're doing the work that we do with clients is that I get excited by revenue targets, of course, as a business owner, mm -hmm. but I've found that the team probably get more excited <laughs> by our giving targets. And you know, we, we have a campaign around... Um, you know, having a certain amount of impacts and people will gun for that a bit more. And it's a more exciting thing to talk about than, 
dollars dollars in the bank. So I think that's a real yeah, it's a, it's a really good news story to have internally as you as you focused on your growth levers as well. Paul, can you share a few examples of some of the 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 people that have how they've used B one G one or business giving broad more broadly to to uh, to drive commercial outcomes within their business? Oh, sure. I mean, they're, 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 it's um, you know, it's fundamentally, it's great to be able to talk about the great things we're doing in the world and 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 so on. But 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 yeah, um, it, it ultimately comes back to what 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 happens in your business. You you just gave one awesome example of it. In fact, last night. Uh, my time, I, I was uh, on a um, uh, uh, session uh, in the United Kingdom, and this guy who is a, a very good business uh, leader uh, was talking about how he and his clients use it, which is, interestingly enough, very closely aligned to what you just said. And the whole session that he was talking about what was on goal setting. I mean, I was just there because he was talking about goal setting, not because he was necessarily going to relate that to to B one G one. You know, I respect this guy, and I thought, oh, we're going to hear some new things on goal setting, which would be really cool. And and what what he did right up front was use exactly the 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 thing that you just said, and that is, uh, you know, we can set a goal of, for example, a hundred thousand dollars or whatever that number is, or you know, ten thousand dollar increase, whatever it is. But how much easier is it when we set that goal in terms of the impacts that are being created? And as you just said, people people will will uh, strive uh, with considerable pride to hit that impact of, for the sake of discussion, um, you know, a, a, a thousand young women getting access to uh, to education on account of how. Uh, if, if you think about the situation, for example, in African countries, where you know young women in particular, and I don't need to go too deep on this, but they 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 only go to school three weeks out of four. Why? Because they don't have the products that kind of protect them in that menstrual cycle, right? So when 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 we actually create these little kits that they get, it it really does put them in school for so much longer. So we are there's that ripple effect where that's changing up lives from an education point of view, but it's changing up lives, as you just mentioned, for the people in your business because they become more attached now to the goals that you've set because they're not monetary goals, they're impact goals. It's kind of like what uh, Tim Duggan uh, said. Uh, and some of us may know of Tim. He he wrote uh, the last year's best. It was actually voted the best business book of last year in, in Australia. And it's called uh, cult status, as in C U L T. Some some financial advisors I know say, "Oh, is that called cult status?" No, it's cult C U L T status. Um, and and he talks about his own personal journey, and he, and he talks about how um, you know the traditional way of of running a business is to set revenue goals and all that kind of stuff. And 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 he gives you a seven step plan, and and step number one in the plan is define the impact, right? Define the impact that you want to have. So right up front, it, you you are thinking about something that is bigger than you. And when you think of those things that are bigger than you, then guess what? The business becomes bigger as well. I love that. And I think that in Australia, and I'm, I'm sure these stats apply out globally as well, but we're seeing with our clients, like huge focus more on um ethical investing and values based investing and so uh, you know with with good reason and we're seeing a lot of these things happening you know around the world negative things and and people want story uh, five years ago we, we were focused heavily on our sales process and our sales process sucked at that time and I remember still I was having conversations with you. You were fortunate enough to offer your ear to help me out with a few things and we were tinkering around with all of these things. But one of the things that we changed was that around with our intro meetings that we're having with clients that yeah, yeah, we exactly. had had people not showing up or coming and, and wasting time and, and not buying and we changed it to, to be a, a bit more of a qualifier. We started charging for the sessions. We charged yes. $195. And then started, yes. don- but donated all the party thing for people to say yes to because they were saying, yeah, the time, but we donate the money. 
makes it yeah, really it's easy. Just, now, oh, for, exactly. It's not for us. I mean, what you're saying is not for us. It's for something bigger than us. And interestingly, what the transition is there, that the, the people then get, oh, working with Ben is actually bigger than us too. Do you, do you see what I mean? So it, 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 it develops this extra attraction. And so instead of you sort of pushing stuff at people, what you're really doing is just building in magnets which attract and people get attracted yep. to that because it becomes bigger than themselves. Well, look, at yeah, I think that that's so important, that thing that it's not just about the money. And it, it's funny that the people that we work with in our business, they're typically doing pretty well. They're, they're you know, we're fortunate we live in a lucky country. We're a wealthy country. Uh, and people come to us as financial planners that they're looking to to build their wealth and get ahead financially. But they do also, you know, we think you think about Maslow's hierarchy and people want to uh, do more and be a good person and be a good member of the of our global society and, and community as well. And it's funny that we've had um, clients that have come to us with, you know, eight figures plus in, in wealth. And you sort of, when you look at some of these clients, some of them, you know, $50 million or $100 million in, in investments. And it's like these people can do any, like they've got enough money that they can basically do almost whatever they want maybe they're not quite at uh bezos's boat uh boat stage <laughs> quite yet but it's a nice I do remember we picked up this client and we we gave we put together a couple of um impacts from some of the things that they mentioned in their in the intro meeting that we had with them some things around education uh there was a a thing on animal welfare they were massive animal lovers and gave them to them and the actual the, the donation that we made to achieve that was was relatively small, particularly you know when you relate it back to fifty million dollars plus in wealth. But they were so um, so amazed. I think it, it, when we'd send it to them, that immediately we're building a deeper connection with them. And I think that's something that people talk a lot about in business. The the like maybe authenticity is not the right word, but the human connection that it's like people come to us because we're professionals and they want professional help. But they also, to your comment, like that belonging, the feeling like we understand them and it allows you to build a deeper relationship with people more quickly and also then to build longer term relationships that people know that they're, you know, we're on this, this they're on a journey with their money, but we're on a journey to, to have an impact uh, with them as well. And I think, I don't know, that for me, it, uh, particularly after you, you know, you get through those first initial years in business, which are always a hard slog, you start thinking about what sort of business do I really want to be running and what is the legacy for, you know, the the team, for the clients, for the impact. And um yeah, yeah that that lines up pretty well with us. I, I know that there's some other um people in the B1 community done some amazing stuff in this in this space. And I think people then it sort of transcends that it's not just about the money, becomes about the relationship and uh something that that we get yeah a, a big buzz out of, but also get some good you know, commercial outcomes from a building good longer term relationships with our clients around. Yeah, I think so. And I, I had an example of that uh, last week at a, at a, with, a, with a major um, uh, bank uh, based uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, without names dropping, uh, they they used to be known as the Queen's Bank, and, and they are talking about you know and it's a different, slightly different thing than you were talking about there. But they're, they're talking about creating uh, family offices, you know, for uh, particularly for wealthy uh, Chinese. And, you know, here in Singapore, it, it, you, you've got to put in 100 million, to, you know, to, to get in. And what they said was it's very interesting because when you, when you get the sort of like the, the, uh, the first generation that in a sense has been, uh, you know, generating that wealth, um, and then passing it on. It's when you get to the later generations that they start thinking, oh my goodness, we really need to build this in, as in build in some form of impact creation uh, right at the start. And then they said, it's very interesting how the older generation get that. And I, and I think, it, let me just speak to that because I, I think it's really, really important. And, and, and Ben, I'm about, uh, let's see, 20 days away this is where all of the financial advisors listening to us now, and again, thank you for listening to us. <laughs> we'll get out your calculators because I'm going to give you a little calculation to do. In about 35 days, I will be 29,000 days old. So there you go. So you're going to divide it by 365 <laughs> and you're going to figure out how many leap years were in there and you're going to go, oh my God, is he still here? 
<laughs> and <laughs> I'm not sure, ben, I'm not sure then whether it is you know a function of, of age, but what actually happens at some point, and and as financial advisors, we we I, I think we just have to get into this. At some point, we we talk we talk about we we start thinking about legacy, and the sooner we start thinking about that, of course, the better it is. But what's interesting is when we think about legacy, we we think about it often as leaving a legacy, right? That's the words, leaving a legacy. And I'm I'm a great one for alliteration, you know, stringing string of words together that begin with the same letter, so they make even more sense. And so I think that as we're listening to this right now, and we're realizing that one of the things we're we meaning you are doing in terms of legacy is to realize that it's not just about leaving a legacy because we don't have any choice as to whether or not we leave one. We have a choice as to what it looks like. Is it one of consumption or is it one of contribution? And let's imagine that we want it to be one of contribution. And so instead of instead of just thinking about the end point, which is like leaving the legacy, why don't we think about living the legacy every second, every day, and in every way? In other words, rather than thinking as, as we used to in, in the charity space, oh, you know, let's do this big kind of quote donation, you know, why not just build it into everything that you do so that as a, you know, in the meeting, you can just give them a little envelope which says, by the way, please don't open this till you leave. And then they open the thing and says, by the way, thanks for a great meeting. We thought you'd love to know that, you know, so many people just got access to water or so many trees were planted or whatever it is that you choose. It just is an incredible, uh, an incredible way of, of connecting. So that's living it every day. But then you think, and it's another L word. So the L word is leverage it, right? And how would you leverage it? Well, precisely in the way that I just uh, we, we just talked about. So you you live it, you leverage it, so that you leave it. And have a guess, right? Have a guess what happens when when the people who you just had the privilege to serve, that is to say, the people who signed up with you, have a guess what they talk about when they talk about the financial advisor that they've chosen. Do they talk about the big things and all of that kind of stuff? No. They talk about the little things. And they say things like, you'll never guess what happened when we saw Sally, you know, the financial advisor. Oh, really? What happened? Well, we had this great painting that she gave us this little thing and said, don't open this until you leave. And we opened it. And we found to our surprise that just by having the meeting, something great happened, specifically you know, 22 kids got access to education and three trees got planted. And the person that Sally's taking, they you are kidding me. No, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. So what's interesting is if you, if you think about the fact that there are, you know, what I would call standard uh, financial advisors who do the normal things in the normal way and all that kind of stuff. So what Ben and I are talking about here is is, is, is is moving from standard to stand out because you stand for, and you stand for something that is bigger than yourself. And, and incorporating uh, B1G1 into the things that you do, just like uh, Ben has done. And again, Ben, <laughs> 2.7 million is, is, is really, really, really cool. And by the way, you should go and have a look at uh, how Ben does displays that on, on his site, and you should also look at all the other financial advisors because we track every single cent of your giving so that you can, in fact, leverage it in a very beautiful way. So, yeah, it's uh, it's I, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, as we started out by saying, you know, this is all about building belonging-based businesses, with reducing churn and attracting more people in, not with people, you know, falling out of the funnel. Um, I think it just yeah. happens that when we do this, great things happen in our world as well. I think that the leverage piece is is a is an important one, and and for us, it's like yes, it does make it easier for clients to refer, and and they've got some some you know non financial things to say instead of say we save them twenty thousand dollars in tax, they can say <clears throat> how we save you know twenty meters of, of rainforest or something like that, exactly. but. Also talking about leverage with them, getting the message out there. I know that we've run some big campaigns, particularly focused around the impact. And again, like it's a 
really nice marketing message to talk about rather than saying we've got 25 new clients. It's like we had 25,000 impacts. So uh, the, me- right. the message is a, is one that people want to hear more than people. And I always feel weird talking about uh, business, you know, goals or, or success because I feel like people don't care but um, or don't care the way that we care. Maybe that, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's a belief. But uh, either way, I think talking about th- those impact campaigns and I know that they're has been like inspire ca uh, uh, uh yeah where people around. are building it in yeah exactly where people are building it in right from the get-go yep absolutely paul uh i could talk about this all day but i, I know that you're a, a busy man with uh, places to go and people to see but <laughs> for um i really really appreciate you you sharing your insights and it's so great to you to hear about the story and to, to be part of that journey as well for anyone that's listening that's interested to to learn more about B1G1, what's the best way for them to go about doing that? Well, a simple way right now is to just simply go to B1G1.com and uh, that's uh, uh, people in the United Kingdom call it Biggie. So it's actually B and then the number one followed by G followed by the number one uh, dot com. Uh, or uh, if you like, you can... Uh, uh, and people say, Ben, I should never do this on a podcast, but let me do it anyway, uh, because I'm nearly two hundred uh, twenty nine thousand days old. <laughs> you could drop me in a drop me a note as well. I'd love to have a conversation with you. So, Paul, uh, as in P A U L at B one G one dot com, uh, and uh, let's uh, let's have a conversation. Let's see some of the magic that we can build together. Awesome, mate. Well, thank you again. Uh, and yeah, like I said at the start, great to have you here. Very fitting for my last uh, podcast with the Ensemble crew for for a little while. Um, guys, I will catch you soon. And uh, Paul, thanks again, mate. Hey, thanks for leaving a great legacy on the podcast as well. That's great. <laughs> thank you, Ben. Great stuff. 